everyone, it's Andrea here and I'm going to talk about one of my favourite book collecting habits and that is film books. I love old Hollywood and old film stars as you know because you've seen some of my hauls. I like books on Judy Garland and I like Rudolph Valentino, I like Jean Harlow, Clark Gable, I love all the old stars but the main star I collect books on is Marilyn Monroe. Now, I started collecting Marilyn Monroe books back in <coughs> 1990 which was 26 years ago. Yes, I'm that old. Um, and in those days, there was about 70 or 80 books out maybe. And that's just in English. We're not talking about foreign language books in this video. And the only way you could get hold of those books pre-internet was um, by uh, small ads in the papers and, and magazines, film magazines, secondhand bookshops and fan clubs. And that's where I started getting my secondhand books from. Some of the books I bought brand new, had them for birthdays, Christmas presents, etc. Now, I think today collecting books on Marin Row is a lot harder than it used to be because there are just so many. I myself have nearing 400 volumes. Some of them are duplicates. Some of them are reissues with new information. Some of them are foreign language. I have um, editions in French, in German, in Polish, in Japanese. Japanese books are absolutely gorgeous. So I love them. The photographs are brilliantly reproduced. So what I wanted to do is put together a, book, a, a video of books I think any new collector should get straight away or aspire to get because some of these are quite expensive volumes. Um, now the, most, the cheapest book I've ever paid, bought was I think 50p from a market in Hertfordshire and that was for a book called Of Women and Their Elegance by Milton Green and Norman Mailer and it's a fictional book which uses photographs of women by Milton Green and Norman Miller imagines he's Marilyn basically. Um, the most expensive book I've bought on Marilyn so far is the Titian um, Andrea Didier's book which is absolutely stunning and you will be seeing that one today. There is a cheaper volume of vers uh, version available um, which we'll go into because they have released it in a small box set and they have released it in individuals as well which is really good. I had to have the big box. Now there is a, a few other books that are really expensive and that I don't have um I would really like for instance the Lawrence Schiller book is like a grand but it's beautiful but I can only aspire to that I can't afford that it'd take me ages to save it and there's so many other books I want that it's not really something I'm gonna really go for if I won some money on the lottery yeah but generally no so for new fans these are books I think that you should have on your bookshelves these are the ones you should look to be getting because there's so much out there and so much of the information in some of the older books has now been revised, debunked, proved incorrect. That most of the books in this list are going to be pretty new. There are a few old ones, but most of them are brand new or within the last five or ten years. Also, the internet is great for finding new books. You can go on eBay, Amazon, A Books, that's just at UK, The Works, The Book Depository, W. Smith, Waterstones, and there's loads of Marilyn books out there, second hand and brand new. One of the downsides of the internet is internet publishing and self-publishing. I have got some books that have been self-published that are just horrendous and I'll probably do another video on, on books you shouldn't buy or only buy if you want to collect all the volumes like I do. I have, like I said, nearly 400 or more than 400 volumes. There are, are poetry books, there are plays, there are fictional stories as well as photo books, gallery guides, auction catalogues the biographies and the photo books. Now we'll be giving you, I'll be giving you 30 titles in this list. 15 will be biographies um, and 15 will be photo books, although they do tend to overlap obviously because she was a, a model at, at part of her life. 15 because there are 10 essentials and there are five honourable mentions that I think you should get as well. So we're going to start with the biographies and I'll just have to look at my little list. So the first, we're going to start with biographies. The first biography I think is a must, and that is Marilyn Monroe, Private and Undisclosed by Michelle Morgan. That's this one. This is the first edition hardback that came out. And if I can get in there, it's signed because I know the author. I was there at the, um, the launch party. And a photograph I took is actually in this book. It is. It's very tiny though. You can barely see it. Can I find it? Can I find it? I don't know. Where is it? Is it in here? Where is it? It's a very small picture of her piano that I took at the Christie's auction when I went in 
1999. I can't find it. It's in here. It's in here somewhere anyway. So yeah. This is a great bi biography with which had at the time very rare photographs. You've got a nice little bookmark. This phrase, as you can see, but mine's in pretty good condition because I don't read it very often. Michelle Morgan used to run the fan club, Marilyn Society. She interviewed lots of people that knew Marilyn. This picture was never published before this book. And she got it from a friend of Marilyn's when she was still Norma Jean named Bill Purcell. It's a great book. Only facts, no fiction, no conspiracy theories, no death theories. It's just 100%. This is Marilyn as far as we can ascertain from the facts that, that are out there. So there's no scandal, no gossip. There is stuff in here that's quite heartrending. For instance, she said to Bill Purcell at one point that she was so fed up of Hollywood, she was so fed up of, of being um, wanted just for her looks that she wanted to throw acid in her face. Of course, the papers blew up about that, but it was just something she said in passing. She never would have done it. So that's my first first must-have book. You must get this one. Now, second on the list of must-haves, and the stack is absolutely high, you can't see it, it's just over here, it's massive, is there are actually two volumes, but this is book one and two, so this is, you know, these are two separate volumes. And that's Icon, The Life, The Times and the Films of Marilyn Monroe by Gary Vitico Rubles. These came out last year and the year before. So this tells the story from 1926 to 1956. And again, it's all factual. There's stuff I didn't know in here. I've been collecting for 26 years. There is no photographs other than what's on the cover. It's all text. It is a must have. It is one of the best books ever written. It is so in depth, it is so concise. That many pages, just on the thir first 30 years of her life. Get it. And you must get to go with it. Icon Volume 2. Look at this gorgeous picture from Something's Got to Give, her final film, the one she never finished. This is, says 1956, 1962 and beyond. So this goes up to her death and then carries on into her legend. I do understand that Gary has a third volume planned, which will go into the legend in more depth, which I'm really, really excited about because if it's anything like this, it's going to be great. And of course, you've got all the, the information about the death, uh, the studio when she was fired, singing happy birthday to President Kennedy. It's all in there, but again, this, it's not scandalous. It's not this whole rubbish that people want you to believe about her. You must have it. Number four, these aren't in any particular order. These are just the ones I think you should have, is my story, and it's by Marilyn Monroe, as told to journalist Ben Hecht. Um, this was released in 19, I think it's 1974. Um, the rights went into, became the property of Milton Green. Yes, 1974, the year I was born. It is the same age as me. This is a first edition British copy. So it's Marion's own words as told to, so it was ghost written. But it obviously it only goes up to like 1956 or 54 maybe, I'm not sure. But yeah, there have been several editions of this. If you can't get a first edition, there's a beautiful one with a gorgeous Milton Green cover on it. So that is another one you must have. Again, from somebody who knew her, though not as well as we would have liked her to, is My Sister Marilyn by Mona Miracle, which is her, her niece and her half-sister Bernice Baker Miracle. Um, basically, her mother Gladys had two children before Norma Jean. She was divorced and they were living with the, the father. When Norma Jean was a teenager, she discovered that she had a half-sister named Bernice and eventually went to, she went to visit them. They lived in Tennessee? I don't know, it's been a long time. Kentucky. And then um, Bernice is actually still alive. She was, she's older than Mary, she's still alive. She lives in Florida. And her niece, uh, Mona, is still alive as well. So there's lots of lovely stories of when Norma Jean was a girl, a teenager, growing up into the, to being a beautiful model, modeling stories, and stories about their mother, which is very interesting as well. Next on the list, this is actually the first book I ever bought on Marilyn, and it is Norma Jean, The Life and Death of Marilyn Monroe by Fred Lawrence Giles. This has been uh, updated several times. This isn't the most up-to-date version. This is just the version I had, although I had it in paperback. I have now got it in a hardback, not good condition, but better than the condition of my paperback, which is the pictures are falling out of. And there's always more pictures in the hardback edition. So, and this was the first one. Again, they, 
alluded to the Kennedys in this book but it wasn't an all-out conspiracy. Um, it's a lovely written book. I read this in one sitting when I bought it. That's how good it is. Now I'm on 10 minutes so I'm gonna have to speed up a bit. The next book I think you must have in your collection is Fragments. Poems, Intimate Notes and Letters by Marilyn Monroe, edited by Stanley Buchetal and Bernard Comment. Basically they actually reproduce her handwriting and then on the next page we've actually got it typed. So it's, it's poetry. For life, it is rather a determination not to be overwhelmed. For work, the truth can only be recalled, never invented. So, it, you know, in poems that she wrote. Oh, silence, your stillness hurt my head and pierced ears, jars my head with the stillness of sounds, unbearable, durable, on the screen of pitch blackness, comes, reappears, the shapes of monsters, my most steadfast companions, my blood throbbing with unrest, turns its root in the, another direction, and the whole world is sleeping. Ah, peace, I need you, even a peaceful monster. So, and that was written when she was in England, because it's actually on Engelford Green letterhead paper there. So that is a must because this is her own thoughts on her work, her life and, and the poetry. She wrote a lot of poetry people don't know about. Now the last must have, no, no, there's one more after that. So this one is Donald Spoto. This came out in about 1902, I think. Um, when this came out, it was groundbreaking. It debunked the, the Kennedy affair stories. Um, the ending is not the best. There are things in it that aren't really good. Things that have been discovered since it's flashing at me I don't know why um but it's still a really good book I would still recommend it the cover picture had never been published when this came out and there is and I have it and so does Michelle a large cardboard cutout that was in Waterstones and various other bookshops that um advertised this and I was lucky to get it the final book on your must have is the DD Group an investigation into the death of Marilyn Monroe by David Marshall this came about from a group oh that's why my other European health card went use it as a bookmark <laughs> um, from a group an online group called the death discussion group now this was done it was a part of immortal Marilyn's death discussion group because immortal Marilyn's policy they are the biggest fan club is not to discuss her death on the forum now they're on Facebook it's still the same they have a death discussion group as well um, so in the main forum we don't talk about her death other than in August when they collect money for flowers and this is all the emails that went back and forward between members and then they timelined absolutely everything they could find to do with her death and put it in a book it's a great book I need to get the hardback because this is as you see I've referred to this quite a lot it's quite quite battered this one but again, you must have that. And I've got to retrieve my list because it's stuck under the books. Now we're moving on to my honourable mentions, I believe. Yes, honourable mentions. The first one is the reissue of A Life of the Actress by Carl Rollison. When this came out in the 80s, it was groundbreaking in the sense that it was the first book to ever focus on her acting career rather than on the way she looked in her personal life. Uh, this is an updated version for the... For the current decade and I, I would say yeah it's worth getting don't stress about it but it is definitely worth getting I do like this book I like the feel of this book it's, oh God, I feel so soft and silky isn't it terrible when you start touching up the books <laughs> uh, next honorable mention is Marilyn Among Friends so this is more of a picture book than a biography book but it's because it's stories from her friends as well I've put it in the sort of like biography section and this is by Norman Ruston and Sam Shaw. Norman Ruston was a poet and Sam Shaw a photographer. And Sam Shaw took some of, the, some of my favourite pictures, like the cover photographs, one of my favourites. I love this. It's, uh, and so it's their reminiscences of Marilyn's life in the mid-50s when she was married to Arthur Miller and living in New York. And it's just, it is, they are lovely stories. I'm running out of space to pop them back. Let's pop that one up there. No, it doesn't live, oh, it does, it does live there. It lives there, actually. Next to the paperback version. The next honourable mention is going to be another Norman Roston book. And this is Marilyn, an untold story. Um, and this is his personal recollec recollections. They're not really in that book. There's not many photographs, if any. Um, there are a few. But they're mostly quite famous. Well, that's quite a nice one there. That uh, candid of her. 
So again, because it's Friends Recollection, it's a really, really nice book to have. So I'll pop that back in there. I don't know if that's where it lived, but that's where it's going for now. I think it lives on the other one. Another one is, again, by Gary Vitico Rubles. I can't pronounce your name. I'm sorry, Gary, if I'm butchering it. You know how much I love your books. Um, and again, there were two editions of this. I do have them both, a paperback and a hardback. Uh, Kirsten Perficio, Marilyn Monroe's Brentwood Hacienda, the story of her final months. Kirsten Perficio was on some tiles that were outside the front door of her house. And there's a photograph of said tiles, if it focuses over. Um, so this is really about her house. And there are photos of her house in here, photos of the objects that were in her house. These photos were taken at Christie's. Um, and there's a model that uh, Gary has of the house. So it tells the story of her, of her putting together her life in her new house. It was the first house she'd ever bought on her own. The first house she bought was with Arthur Miller, but this was the first one she bought on her own. And it's just, it is a really nice book to have. I would definitely get it. My copy's getting a bit battered because again, it's one I love to look through. Um, another one is again by Carl Rollison that I, I do like is Marin Road Day by Day. A timeline of people, places and events. It's not 100% accurate, but then what book is? There is a new timeline event book out, but I haven't got it yet. I will be ordering that at the end of this month when I get paid. Um, and obviously I'll review that when I get it and I've read it because <laughs> I've got so many books to read. And again, so basically you turn the page, 1949, January the 1st. Oops, there's a bookmark in here. Oh, it's a sticker from Cornwall. Marilyn is Johnny Hyde's guest, is palmstring home. May 22nd, 1956. Marilyn attends Susan Strasberg's, Strasberg's birthday party. May 29th. Marilyn finishes shooting bus stop and she appears on a look cover and inside in an article called New Marilyn. So that's what that like. There are some mistakes in it, but it's still a really nice book to have. And the last one for honourable mention goes to Michelle Vogel. Her film's Her Life. I imagine I'll have to make this in two videos because it's already at 17 minutes, so I'm going to make a separate one for the photo books. Um, there's not many photos in this one. There are photos in this one. That, that one's a very nice one of her. Uh, uh, so we're not married. That's a costume test. So again, this is a basic biography um, with a filmography. It tells you what's going on in her life during the films, when she's making her films. And I think it's, it's a really nice book to have. This one is not cheap, but I like it. So yeah, I would definitely get it. I can start reading Marilyn books now. You know that, don't you? Okay, so that's all the biography type books that I would recommend you have. So that's the first 15 on the list. I'm gonna take a five minute break, get a drink, and come back and show you the photo books, which are some of my favourites. I mean, photo books, I could show you hundreds of photo books on Marilyn. There are some fantastic ones, but um, yeah, I think this video is long enough for 18 minutes. So I will be back soon with the video on the Marilyn photo books. So I will see you soon. Bye.